that sets Rude Van Nistelrooy apart as a coach. His ability to balance a calm, approachable demeanor with a fierce, competitive edge makes him a unique leader for Manchester United. While he fosters an environment of open communication and personal growth, he also knows when to demand more from his players and push them to reach their full potential. As Van Nistelrooy continues to settle into his role as interim head coach, the next few weeks will be crucial. The early signs of his leadership are promising, especially following his debut victory against Leicester City. Fans are hopeful that his resilience and determination, traits that made him a legendary striker, will translate into a successful managerial tenure and bring about a turnaround at the club. However, there are still difficult decisions to be made. Van Nistelrooy's cryptic comments about players needing to step up or step aside have sparked widespread speculation about who might be on their way out. While some believe the decision could clear the way for fresh talent, others worry about the potential loss of a player who might yet find form under the right guidance. These discussions have only intensified as the transfer window looms, and fans are anxiously awaiting further developments. One player whose future may be in jeopardy is reportedly a high-profile figure at the club, potentially someone who has not met the expected standards under the current circumstances. The atmosphere around Old Trafford is charged with anticipation, as fans and pundits alike try to predict who could be the player that Van Nistelrooy might part ways with. It could be a defining moment in the club's trajectory as the Red Devils aim to find consistency and challenge for honors once again. The combination of Van Nistelrooy's hard work ethic, his footballing IQ, and his commitment to excellence will be key in determining whether Manchester United can rise to the challenges ahead. Fans are eager to see how his approach will impact the team, and with the transfer window approaching, the next few weeks could be pivotal for both squad decisions and the overall direction of the club. For now, all eyes are on Van Nistelrooy and the changes he may bring to Manchester United as he tries to take the team back to the heights they once enjoyed. Will his leadership style be enough to reinvigorate the squad? The answers will begin to unfold in the coming months. Stay tuned for all the latest updates on Manchester United. The cryptic remarks made by Rudd Van Nistelrooy about players needing to step up or step aside have certainly added fuel to the speculation surrounding the Manchester United squad. With the club underperforming this season, it's clear that changes are needed, and Van Nistelrooy's comments have only deepened the sense that tough decisions are on the horizon. While some fans and pundits believe that a shakeup in the squad could pave the way for fresh, dynamic talent, others are more concerned about potentially losing experienced players who could still have a significant role to play under the right leadership. After all, Manchester United is a club built on a foundation of history and tradition, and some believe that letting go of a player with years of experience could disrupt the team's core, even if that player has struggled to find form recently. The timing of these potential changes is also critical. With the transfer window fast approaching, the club may look to offload players who are deemed surplus to requirements or those who simply haven't met the high standards expected at Old Trafford. On the flip side, Van Nistelrooy could decide to back players who may need more time to rediscover their best form, offering them a second chance to impress in a system that better suits their abilities. Ultimately, the club's trajectory will depend heavily on how Van Nistelrooy balances these tough calls. The Red Devils need to find a way to compete at the highest level again, and that means a mixture of fresh talent and experienced heads may be the key to success. Fans are anxiously awaiting clarity on which players may be shown the door, especially with several big names reportedly in danger of being moved on. The next few weeks will be crucial not only in terms of recruitment but also in terms of player retention. Who stays and who goes could have a lasting impact on the team's future. As the transfer window draws near, all eyes will be on Van Nistelrooy to see how he reshapes the squad to fit his vision. With Manchester United's future at stake, it's going to be a fascinating few weeks for both the club and its supporters. Stay tuned as we bring you the latest news and updates from Old Trafford. 
Ruud van Nistelrooy, is hoping that Manchester United can welcome back some injured players as he prepares for his final two games as interim manager. The Reds will host Poscas Academy in the Europa League on Thursday, before Leicester City return to Old Trafford next Sunday, in a repeat of Van Nistelrooy's first match as temporary boss, a 5-2 Carabao Cup victory over the Foxes. However, Manchester United's squad has been severely depleted due to injuries. Christian Eriksen, who missed the earlier fixture against Leicester, was still sidelined for the team's match against Chelsea on Sunday. In total, United were without eight first-team players, forcing Van Nistelrooy to name four teenagers on the bench for the Chelsea visit. Among them were Jack Fletcher and Jace Fitzgerald, both 17 years old, who had yet to make a senior appearance for the club. The midfield was particularly thin, with Victor Lindelof, normally a centre-back, being pressed into service as a holding midfielder in the final minutes of the Chelsea game. We are thin, Van Nistelrooy admitted in a Man UTD TV interview with Liam Bradford. We had some young lads on the bench who are very talented and will be very important for the future, but we were especially thin in midfield. We had no midfielders on the bench, but we hope we can bring some back for the coming week so we can have more options. United's injury woes have been a significant concern. Players like Kabi Minu and Mason Mount have not featured since the last international break, while Anthony Marshall picked up an injury in Istanbul last month. Van Nistelrooy is hopeful that these key players can return soon, offering more options from the bench as United looks to navigate a challenging stretch of fixtures. Despite the difficult circumstances, Van Nistelrooy remains optimistic. It's been an emotional roller coaster, he said. From Monday to today has almost been a full week where so many things happened, and my task was to steady the ship and get results. I think the players reacted well on Wednesday and today, and it's something to build on for the next two games. Meanwhile, Manchester United captain Bruno Fernandes expressed his thoughts on the possibility of Ruben Amarim becoming the club's next permanent manager. Speaking to the press, Fernandes, who previously played for Sporting CP, shared his admiration for Amarim's managerial style. I watch all sporting games, they are my team, Bruno said. I know how they play and I keep a close eye on them. Amorim has done a fantastic job there and I think he's a great coach. Fernandez acknowledged that Amorim's tactics and style at sporting have been successful, but also pointed out the challenge of adapting to a new club with different players. You never know what a manager is going to do when joining a new team, Bruno explained. Each team has its own identity, and even a great coach like Amorim will need time to adjust. We have different players here, so it will take time to adapt. Amorim has been widely praised for his success in Portugal, especially for developing young talent and modernizing Sporting's approach. His tactical innovation has revitalized the team and won him many admirers across Europe. If he joins Manchester United, many fans hope he can bring the same level of progress to Old Trafford, particularly in terms of youth development and tactical flexibility. However, the path to success at United may not be easy. After a disappointing 1-1 draw with Chelsea, Roy Keane offered a scathing assessment of the team and their current state. This is an average Manchester United team, Keane said, following the draw that confirmed United's worst start to a Premier League season. The stats back that up. They're hit and miss. You never know which team will turn up. There's nothing special about them. They lack conviction, and it's disappointing. They're way off getting back into the top four. Keane also criticized Bruno Fernandes's leadership, adding that the team's failures on the pitch were largely down to the players' shortcomings. You're judged on what you do on the pitch, and Bruno hasn't been doing enough in a lot of games. He hasn't shown leadership. I don't think he's done enough to help the manager out. Despite Keane's criticism, Fernandes took a more reflective approach in discussing the departure of Eric Ten Hag. He admitted that he had spoken to his former boss and apologized after Ten Hag was sacked. I spoke to the manager and I apologized to him, Bruno said. 
I was disappointed he's gone, and I know that the team has to take some responsibility. It's easier to sack a manager than to get rid of 15 players. We weren't scoring goals, and I feel responsible for that. Keane, however, wasn't as sympathetic, arguing that players' apologies were too little, too late. Players can be selfish, Keane remarked. They're more focused on the next manager coming in. Ruben Amarim makes amusing Sir Alex Ferguson point as Manchester United arrival nears. Ruben Amarim will be in charge of his penultimate game at Sporting CP when they host Manchester City in the Champions League on Tuesday night. All eyes will be on Ruben Amarim on Tuesday night as Sporting Clube de Portugal take on Manchester United's rivals, Manchester City, in the Champions League. The match will be Amarim's penultimate game in charge for Sporting before completing a move to Old Trafford next Monday, November 11th. Sporting will host Pep Guardiola's side at Estadio José Alvalade, and the Portuguese will be keen to leave a positive mark, as the majority of United's fan base prepare to tune in. When asked about that in his press conference on Monday, Amorim name-checked Sir Alex Ferguson, saying, I know they will draw conclusions from this result, but it doesn't really matter to me. If the result is negative, expectations will lower. If we win, they'll think the new Alex Ferguson has arrived. Amorim chuckled to himself at that point and went on. I'm Sporting's coach until the 11th. I understand the interest, but for me, it's another game against a team from the best league in the world. After United announced Amarim as their new head coach last week, Guardiola stated, Welcome to United in England. I will congratulate him on Tuesday. We faced each other two or three seasons ago in the Champions League. Welcome. I'm not the right person to give advice to my colleagues. United have a lot of people who will tell him the situation in the club. I cannot give him any advice. The Catalan faced Amarim twice as city manager after they met in the last 16 of the Champions League in 2022. City defeated the Lions 5-0 in the first leg in Lisbon, before a goalless draw in the second at the Etihad Stadium. Ruben Amarim, the young and dynamic manager of Sporting CP, is preparing for what could be his penultimate game in charge as they face Manchester City in the UEFA Champions League on Tuesday. Amarim, 39, has already become one of the most talked about names in European football, and speculation is rife that he will soon take over as manager at Manchester United. Ahead of the crucial match, Amarim made an amusing remark about Sir Alex Ferguson that captured the press's attention, revealing his playful side and acknowledging the gravity of the task ahead. I've always admired Sir Alex Ferguson, not just for his managerial brilliance, but for his ability to find a good whiskey at the right moment. Maybe that's something I'll learn when I get to Manchester, he joked, bringing some lightness to the intense media atmosphere surrounding his rumored move to Old Trafford. The comment was met with laughter, but it also highlighted the serious nature of Amarim's imminent transition to one of the biggest clubs in the world. As Sporting prepares to face Manchester City in a tough Champions League fixture, the manager's focus remains firmly on the job at hand. I'm here to win, he said, emphasizing that Sporting deserves his full attention until the final whistle blows. Yet it's clear that Amorim's future is already drawing attention from fans and pundits alike, with many speculating that his time in Lisbon is drawing to a close. Amorim's rise through the ranks of European football has been rapid. After a successful playing career in Portugal, he transitioned into management and quickly made his mark at Sporting. In just a few short years, he has transformed the club, winning the Primera Liga title in 2021, ending a 19-year drought for Sporting, and making the team competitive in Europe once more. His tactical flexibility, sharp defensive strategies, and ability to develop young talent have made him one of the most exciting managerial prospects in Europe. Manchester United, who have been searching for a long-term solution to restore the club to its former glory since Sir Alex Ferguson's departure in 2013, appear to have seen something in Amarim. 
After years of managerial turnover from David Moyes to Jose Mourinho to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and Eric Ten Hag, United is looking for a leader who can bring stability and a clear identity. Amorim's track record with sporting suggests he has the ability to do just that, blending tactical discipline with a focus on youth and flair. Amorim's legacy at sporting will be a lasting one. Under his stewardship, the club has become competitive both domestically and internationally, with homegrown talents like Pedro Gonçalves and Nuno Santos thriving under his watch. Despite the looming prospect of his departure, Amorim remains committed to the task at hand. I owe it to the fans and to this club to give everything until the very last minute, he said, underscoring his professionalism even as rumors swirl around his future. Sir Alex Ferguson steps down from another job as legendary ex-Man United boss, resigns from 24.3 million pound company. Two of Ferguson's sons have also stepped down from their positions. Red Devils co-owner Sir Jim Ratcliffe continued his cost-cutting measures last month as he stopped paying Fergie's £2 million a year salary. The move was widely condemned by a number of X-Man UTD players, while it was also reported the iconic head coach had been banned from the dressing room. Now Ferguson has reportedly relinquished another of his duties, though this time it was solely his decision. According to The Mirror, he has resigned as director of his company, ACF Sports Promotions Limited. The business is understood to have made £24.3 million in assets and investments. They include a £2 million collection of sporting memorabilia, a £19 million investment portfolio, and a cash reserve of £5.1 million. Fergie began the company during his time at Aberdeen, before he had started his 27-year stint as Man Ut boss. He stepped down as director on October 29th, with sons Jason and Darren having resigned one day earlier. Another of Fergie's children, Mark, is still a director of the company and is continuing in the role he has held for 12 years. Ferguson's late wife, Lady Kathy, was also a director up until she passed away last year. Just a fortnight after Man Utid relieved Fergie of his ambassadorial role, they also sacked manager Eric Ten Hag. Former striker Ruud van Nistelrooy is currently in interim charge of the side, but Ruben Amorim will take over as the new permanent coach on November 11th, after Man Utid agreed a deal with Sporting Lisbon. Sir Alex Ferguson's recent resignation from his role at a £24.3 million company marks yet another significant chapter in the life of the legendary former Manchester United manager. His decision to step down, alongside the exits of two of his sons from their respective positions, signals a notable transition for the Ferguson family and perhaps reflects a desire to focus on personal endeavours after a storied career in football management. Ferguson, who is widely regarded as one of the greatest managers in football history, led Manchester United to unprecedented success during his tenure, including 13 Premier League titles and two UEFA Champions League trophies. Since retiring in 2013, he has remained an influential figure in the football world, often sharing his insights on leadership, management and the game itself. His resignation from the company could indicate a shift in priorities, potentially allowing him more time to focus on family and personal projects. As a highly respected figure, Ferguson's departure may also prompt discussions about the future direction of the company and the legacy he leaves behind. The fact that two of his sons have also stepped down suggests a family-oriented decision possibly indicating a collective desire to move away from their business commitments and explore new opportunities. Ferguson's impact on football and the business world has been profound, and his leadership philosophy continues to resonate. His ability to inspire and motivate not just players but also colleagues and associates has been a hallmark of his career. The lessons he imparted during his time at United, such as the importance of resilience, teamwork, and adapting to change, remain relevant and are often cited in various contexts beyond football. As he steps away from this role, 
fans and former players alike, will undoubtedly reflect on his remarkable legacy, not only as a manager, but as a mentor and leader. Ferguson's next steps will be closely watched, as many are curious about how he will choose to spend his time in this new phase of life. Whether he takes on a more advisory role in football, focuses on charitable endeavors, or simply enjoys retirement, one thing is certain. His influence on the sport will continue to be felt for years to come. What do you think Ferguson's legacy will look like as he moves into this new chapter? Are there specific contributions you believe he will continue to make in football or business?